and we're back. So, let's see. Right. Yeah, so in the first movie, Peter is desperate to become an adult. He's seen as an adult. Now he really wants to be a teenager, not have to be an adult for just a little bit longer. Teenagers do go back and forth between those, and Tony wanted to protect Peter, who Fury thinks of Peter as a tool to solve a certain problem. Now, I guess that more or less covers, yeah. Hmm. I'm not sure how much. I, I read a bunch of the reviews, but I guess. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't. I'm not currently planning on doing that. So I'm going to go past the reviews. Okay, here we go. Hope that bounced on camera. There we go. And, yeah, let's see, yeah, Tom Holland wanted Jason Momoa as Craven the Hunter in the movie. Jason Momoa would be way more perfect for that role than Aquaman. Again, I do, I love the movie Aquaman, and I never really had a problem with Momoa's Aquaman. I just don't think it's, I, I feel like it's, it's, you're just, you don't need Momoa to play Aquaman, you know, it, it just, if it, it feels like, it feels like they're trying too hard, you know, but he would be spot on for Craven the Hunter. Now, let's see. And... Jake Gyllenhaal was actually supposed to play Spider-Man in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 after Maguire got injured during the filming of Seabiscuit. I mean, ultimately, he probably would have given a similar performance to Tobey Maguire since Sam Raimi would still be the one directing. You know, I, I don't really think that... I haven't seen Tobey Maguire very much, so I can't... I cannot compare play and simple. But I get the sense that the performances that Sam Raimi got out of the main actors, the main cast in those three movies, were the ones he wanted to get out of them. He, I, I don't necessarily think that they're the best performers or most ideal performances, but if, I would say that, I mean, they're fairly consistent performances, so if, if it wasn't what Sam Raimi wanted, I figure he would have at some point have said, no, 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 you, you, you got to do it this other way. You know, when, when you look at, like, people who just don't give a, a good, you know, performance, then it's not sort of consistent. It's, it's bad in different ways at different times. Now... Originally, Matt Damon... Yeah, Matt Damon turned down the role of Quentin Beck. I mean, I think he could have played it quite well. I uh, I wish it said why he turned it down. Maybe maybe that's somewhere else and I didn't find it, but... Hmm. I... I'm, I'm very happy with, with Jill and Hall. In, in the role. I mean, technically, Matt Damon is already in the MCU. He's just, he is a thespian on, on, you know, he's, yeah, he's an Asgardian thespian. So, let's see. I guess the, let's see. Yeah, 
I quite like how Beck said, you know, this is Earth 616, which, from what I re recall, the, the, yeah, in the comics, or yeah, yeah, the main comics continuity is Earth 616. Now. I like how the, the, let's see, yeah, basically the, the, you know, it's, it's both Mysterio and Nick Fury that are the, you know, the new mentor kind of thing for, now that Iron Man is gone. And, let's see, what else can we find? Right, yeah, uh, about May. Yeah, I was wondering, if, you know, she, was she, would she be seen to worry at all? You know, that is usually, that is something that usually keeps Peter from revealing his identity to Aunt May. In the comics, is he's worried she'll worry about him. We don't really see her a lot worry about him in this. Now. And let's see. If Tony Stark was sort of the mentor in the previous films, we thought it would be interesting to play Mysterio as almost like the cool uncle. Having Beck team up with Fury and Parker to take on a global threat was really exciting to watch. We wanted to bring the character into the MCU and in a way people weren't expecting. It definitely surprised me. I ha I mean, I heard, you know, Mysterio is going to be in the movie. And I was like, wow, that, you know, I, I can't wait. And then you see the trailer and he shows up and he's like, you don't want any part of this fight. And he fights the, the giant, you know, Hydro Man. I had not at all expected. Like, I have to admit, I thought that it was going to be a more straightforward this is the villain kind of way that they would deal with him like maybe maybe something like the 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 way that we first meet magneto in you know the yeah in the first three x-men movies you know it's very clear that he's a villain in in you know yeah I'm, I gotta be careful not to spoil continuities that aren't this one, but yeah, the the let's see, yeah, you know, something like that. That it would be clear that this is basically the bad guy, but yeah. Now, right, yeah. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 has Sandman, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 has Electro, and now this has someone inspired by Sandman, so there's at least one character based on something, you know, some kind of natural element or something in all three live-action continuities. Now, I guess that covers...
yeah, I guess that is it. So, yeah, I I love this movie. I'm I'm so happy we we finally got just not not only a Mysterio movie but perfect representation of Mysterio. I I'm super excited about the third one, and yeah, just it's it's yeah. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching the recording, and I'll catch you next time.